Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be comparing the Muxall Pro Barbecue Controller, controller's main PCB version 3, to the main PCB in version 4. All right, and there's a there's actually quite a few changes in this. I I relayed out the whole board, and I did that because it now has version four now has four layers. There's a top, uh, inner ground, inner power, and bottom. And if you've been watching my previous videos, I think I mixed up these two layers. I think I called layer two power. It's actually layer three. No big deal. That being probably the biggest change, um, we can just get started. Uh, this will just start at the top, why not? Uh, this stuff up here, this is the ESP32. It's, a, it's actually, you know, the footprint of it, it, these are, this thing sits on a header. If you've seen pictures of the controller, you know what I'm talking about. The antenna's right here, but there's room for the plug in the that have these uh transistors down here so and these just switch on various components i don't remember what they are off the top of my head let's see does it say what it is uh no it doesn't so uh yeah let's look at the at the layout of this because that's probably the biggest changes so i did shift the esp32 to the right a little bit and i did that because to make room for the external antenna uh, so right now with the on the version 3 the external antenna kind of sticks out here And if you're trying to stick it in the original trigger con uh, Controller hole it uh, you can't <laughs> Well, you can but you have to kind of either cut it the a little space out for the hole or or shove it in there somehow and and it, I couldn't do it in mine so I'm assuming and it just needed a just a dad. I'm talking, you know, a few hair widths. So I, I went ahead and shifted that thing over as far as I could uh, without it sticking out the other side over here. That'll give us some more room for that that uh, external antenna connector, right? The, the uh, SMA connector, right? It's a little angled connector. You've seen them. Have you seen pictures of the controller? Okay, and uh, these these guys didn't change. Nothing's changed there. Uh, probably the biggest change, and everything's kind of changes. So, so now we have uh, layer two is is all ground, and as you can see, that it's got. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't have the uh, the flood fill turned on. I we can turn it on it real quick so you can take a look at it. Objects. Uh, copper pours. Yeah, see, look at that baby, huh? <laughs> yeah, we're not going to have any problems uh, getting a signal through this. There's uh, there's all kinds of greenery right there <laughs> for signals to uh, traverse, right? Uh, another thing I did as well is I, I also added um, strain reliefs to these pins. You can see these, uh, what I'm talking about, these... These guys are, it's not a strain relief, it's, um, hold on, my brain's rebooting. It's, uh, they're, sorry, <laughs> they're, uh, thermal reliefs. I, I, I was close, I said strain relief. Yeah, the thermal relief. So when you're soldering, see, this big floodplain acts like a big heat sink, right? And so when you're soldering this guy, <laughs> you don't want it sinking all the heat away from your pin, and you get, get bad solder joints, right? So, uh, so I put all these thermal reliefs in. And I did that on all the layers. So anyway, this is layer two ground. You can see it's got plenty of room to uh, move around versus the, or to pass signals through versus the the bottom of version three. Let me turn on it. And if, you, if you've been watching the videos, you'll, you'll know. So here's version threes and and it, it's got a lot of real estate too, but we got a couple little pinch points right here that was causing me problems. I had to add, I, uh, had to add a bodge wire in here to get the ground, uh, a lower inductance path uh, from ground to the ESP32. And then that was pretty much it. 
on that, yeah, I, I was like, okay, we're just going to uh, you know, fix that with, well, I had to fix that anyway, but uh, we're now, now with the layer four, uh, <laughs> we don't have that problem anymore. I know it looks kind of cut up, but believe me, there's there's lots of lots of greenery here to to for the return signal. Okay, and since we're talking about layers, let's go ahead and we'll just look at the power layer, and it's also flood filled with uh, ground. And but I did run all the power traces uh, with these nice ginormous. Uh, what are these things? Uh, it doesn't say. Uh, 40 mil traces. <laughs> so here's a here's a 3.3 volts coming down. It's going to these headers and and uh, what is this guy down here? Let me look at the top layer. Um, oh, that's a rotary encoder. I know it's kind of hard to see, isn't it? That's why I had all the you know, flood fills turned off uh, so we could see them, see the components. <laughs> and, the, and the layout better right uh but yeah so the different colors are the different uh so here's a five volt this is remember the adc this is under the adc it's got its own little private power supply right here so it's it's got its own little power distribution flood fill and and see what is this guy here oh this is just a trace oh yeah so i you know, if I when I was routing, if I needed to jump a trace down, I jumped it down to the, the power layer, and I did that because I didn't want to cut up the bottom layer too much. I wanted to make sure there was plenty of room to get signals through. And if you notice, this thing is riddled with vias. All, all four layers, by the way, are flood filled with ground, and and riddled. The ground being the green, right? And uh, and they're riddled. This whole thing is riddled with vias. There's a path to ground everywhere, right? And I did that for a couple reasons. One for signal integrity, but also to uh, the cut back on the noise. We're going to be running a 240 volt board. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of noise emanating off that baby. And and I want to make sure that you know this uh, these grounds can absorb and and get rid of it, or, or at least damping it quite a bit, right? So, uh, all right, so let's go back. That was kind of the quick overview of the layers. Uh, go turn these guys back off, because you can't really see anything with them on. If you're wondering why we have these rat lines right here, it's because my program doesn't like that I, let's see, on the power here. In retrospect, and I might fix this in another version of PCB, so it doesn't like that this 3.3 volt and this 3.3 volt aren't connected, right? And But they are connected. The program doesn't know it. On the ESP32, this is a 3.3V pin, and this is a 3.3 volt pin. And there's a trace on the ESP32 that connects these. And that's why this does, is showing up not connected. If I actually drew a trace right here, it would it would be happy, but it doesn't like that too much, right? And then on this five volt board, this is I'm sorry, five volt line. This is where it's jumping up into the high voltage board because if you remember, if you watch the the video on the high voltage PCB, I have distributed the high, the five volts on the bottom of the high voltage board, and uh, and it goes down every one of these headers, right? And and so. If I needed five volts right here, I just pulled it off that header right there because it's coming straight from the power supply. And uh, instead of trying to route a trace through here, okay? And, and that that works pretty good, but the program doesn't like it. That's why it keeps popping these rat lines up, <laughs> telling me that I don't have something connected properly. So, uh, but what I was saying in retrospect is I, I wish I would have ran a trace right here. And the reason why, it has nothing to do with the functionality of the controller but when i'm working on it i don't want to use the high voltage board i can just unplug you know when i'm working when i'm building these things i test them without the high voltage board first and when i do that the lcd backlight 
and the buzzer, which is what this is connected to. Yeah, down here. So the buzzer and the LCD backlight down here don't work because the high voltage board, I keep showing you the 3.3 volts. I'm sorry, that's, that's not correct. This is five volt. When I plug into the, and power it through the USB, the ESP32 actually supplies the five volts instead of the high voltage board, right? And this is why you're not supposed to plug in the ESP32 and the high voltage board at the same time. <laughs> Oops. So, yes, but, so when I'm testing this thing and I don't have the high voltage board plugged in, I just plug into the ESP32, uh, the USB, I mean, that my buzzer and, and LCD backlight don't work and the button lights and none of the lights work. <laughs> so, it, you know, uh, what I probably need to do is just run, you know, it doesn't have to be a real big trace, but just a trace from, from here down to here and then maybe over here or, or connect these guys right here. And, and then, but it'd only be for testing or assembly actually, not even testing. So I don't know, I, we'll see. But anyway, that's why these rat lines are here. And enough about my personal building problems. Let's see, what else do we got going on here? Let me turn off this copper pour. Go to layer, top layer. Oh, I did move this hole right here. I did that because this flat flex from here to here was was pretty tight and didn't allow any margin for error and and that's not a good way to engineer something <laughs> you always want to have some margin for error so i went ahead and moved that up and and laid this out oh another thing i did is i also moved all these caps these are the kind of a bypass smoothing type cap for the um the inputs of the adc i i moved them over by the the protection resistors right here uh, on version four, you can see. So here's all the, all the caps, C111 through 16. And you can see down here, well, there's 14, 13. So I moved them right next to the, the protection resistors and that kind of freed up some space around this guy. And so I could get the traces out and these aren't really bypass caps for the ADC. So it made sense that they are out here. And uh, of course the bypass caps I have crammed as close as possible and tied together with a bunch of vias and on layer two, these are the power input caps that I was showing you. And if you watch the, um, the schematic comparing the V3, V4 main PCBs, you'll, you'll know that I added some 0.1 mic caps to the 10 mic caps, crammed them as close together as I could in here <laughs> and tied them all together with vias and also put a nice big, uh, well, you saw it previously, it's a nice big power uh, flood fill right here, copper pour, all right? And uh, I could turn it back on, but you probably remember. And, uh, hmm, what else? Oh, yeah, so this Phoenix connector, this is a big, monstrous, uh, and expensive connector. And, <laughs> and you need it for the chamber probe. And I thought we were going to need it. And I wasn't sure when I designed the V3s. But you can see on the V3 that probe 1 and probe 2 and probe 3 all had these Phoenix connectors on there. Remember with the jumpers and... Uh, well, <laughs> you probably don't remember. But anyway, they had jumpers in them. And I took the jumpers out. If you watch the, the schematic video... I added these, the, I took the jumpers out of the, let's see, do I still have that manual pulled up? Yeah, right here. So I took these jumpers out right here and, and put in a regular uh, three pin header with a jumper right in front of it. And I also removed the, the Phoenix headers. I'm sorry, the Phoenix connectors from the meat probes because when I first designed this thing in version one, two, and three, I thought I was going to have to move these wires around that the users were going to have to move them. But come to find out, no one ever moves the wires anywhere. <laughs> so with this header right here, 
I'm sorry, with this jumper, three pin header, I, we can still support everything. So you never have to move the wires. So if we're never removing the wires, we don't need the Phoenix connector. So now you can just solder the wires right in. It'll give a much better connection, lower impedance, doesn't have to go through the connector, get better temperature readings. It is a win, win, win. So yeah, I like this. It will make serviceability a little bit. If, if I ever get a controller back, I'll have to unsolder all this junk. But uh, I think the trade-off is well worth the effort. Because, like I said, this will make a much better connection, lower impedance connection on top of it than the Phoenix connector will. Still have to have the Phoenix connector for the chamber probe because you'll have to pull the wires for the uh, connector in and out. I mean, sorry, the, um, the RTD or, and or therm uh, thermistor or thermocouple, whatever you have. You'll have to, you'll still have to plug them into the different uh, ports depending on what you have into the onto the controller and uh, but it will also eliminate the let me see is it in the manual right here this thing the two to three wire chamber probe adapter <laughs> so so now you can just plug your since i have that jumper right there you can just plug your your art your chamber temperature probe right into the phoenix connector okay you won't have to, you know, screw anything. You just kind of plug it in there. Now, it might get kind of hard. I don't know. We, I might still include a a regular a, a chamber probe. Oh, here we go. A regular adapter kind of like this, except it won't have three wires. It'll just have two. And the reason why this has screws on it, it's easier to access. It's easier to hold. This requires a little bitty screwdriver. You'll have to push down on it. And then you'll have to try to shove the wire into this, this hole right here and... And the wires on those chamber probes, as you know, are kind of junky and they're real flimsy and flex real easily. And, and I don't want people calling and saying this thing's a piece of junk. <laughs> so, so anyway, we'll probably still include a, an adapter for people that want to use it, uh, including me. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll give it a shot and see if how hard it is, but I'll, I'll probably still include the adapter. Anyway, really got sidetracked on that one, didn't I? So let's see, what else we got here? Um, I talked about the Phoenix connectors and that, the jumpers and moving the hole. The ADC pretty much stayed exactly where it was at. I it might have shifted, it looks like it shifted a little bit. Oh yeah, it did shift a little bit, so make room for the uh, power supply. Here's the um, DC to DC converter. And that's powering the, that's supplying nice, clean stable power to the ADC it's real close to it there's all the caps for the power supply right next to it everything's real as close as possible plugged right in this thing should be solid as a rock all right and then here's some more caps around it of course you try to get all these things as close as possible this is the, the sense resistor for temperature measurements there's a couple of those here's oh right here's the transistors for the um they're called diodes, quote unquote diode, but they're actually just transistors that take the board measurements. These are what give you, there's two of them, there's one there and one there. These give you the outside temperature and that's why they're kind of off to the edge. They also kind of get, let you know how hot the controller is getting. And uh, let's see, what else we got? Buzzer, all this stuff's the same. Um... Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like I said, none of this stuff really moved around. I mean, I my assembler's not going to be real happy with me <laughs> because I, really, I I a lot of these things never moved, so he'll still be able to use them. He's uh, I don't think he's going to be too happy with me. I shifting this over a little bit because then he's going to have to change all his uh, pick and place stuff. But I think the extra cost because. Because he, he's not going to be too mad at me. He's just going to charge me for it, right? So <laughs> anyway, it'll, I think it'll be well worth the, well worth the cost. So um, hmm, I don't really see. Let's look at the bottom. Is there anything down there? Nope. Rotary encoder. That, that stayed in the exact same spot. So uh, yeah, that's, that's it. That's, uh, it's almost a... 
It's almost identical, except it's not. <laughs> I did increase some of the tray sizes for it. Well, I, I think I already showed you that on the power distribution. And then, I, of course, I flood filled every layer. Just put vias everywhere. You can see them. <laughs> All the ground vias everywhere. Uh, that's, that's it. I, I can't think of anything. If I do, I'll let you know. Otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you later. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.